Hey, what's up guys? It's been a while and I am just actually sitting outside. It's such nice weather. I actually did a post on my Instagram yesterday and it was like something like winter's setting in. There, there are mountains behind you guys over that side and clouds were rolling in. It was nice, like crisp, cold sort of wintry day. And now today it must be about 25 clear skies. Um, really, really cool. So I'm just sitting outside. I'm actually sitting next to two pairs, the Salomon Ultra Pro. These, I don't know if you'll recognize these, but these are the older ones I first did the video with. And then these are the ones I got afterwards. They're the same style, they're maybe just like a year apart, so they're kind of different. I'll show you guys. Those are them. Really rad pair of shoes. And I just wanted to sit down with you first and foremost, just to go over where I've been and how my training is going and everything. And then also to just go over these shoes and kind of update you guys after I've been using them for a month. And lastly, just my thoughts on kind of where I'm going to go shoe wise and gear wise and stuff like that. So let's jump straight into it. If you're enjoying these videos, I know most of you guys on the channel have found the channel because of gear reviews, stuff like shoes and headphones and, and the Fenix 6X, this watch. So I appreciate you guys watching the videos. If you do like it, like it down below and subscribe if you're not already. It just really helps out the channel. It lets me know kind of who's interested in what and, and so on and so forth. So getting right into it to the Salomon Ultra Pros. These shoes have been some really, really good shoes for me. I use these shoes to train in and I use these shoes to race in. I did the 65 kilometer Ultra Trail Cape Town in these shoes. So I know they are really great shoes and that is why I decided to do this sort of update because I'm kind of conflicted in a way because I've always been with Salomon. I've always been in these shoes for my longer distance runs. And it takes me back to a story that I'll tell you guys, basically like when I started running. So probably about 10 years ago, like a mate and I used to run around the area and stuff like that. Maybe a K, a couple of Ks, 3K runs and stuff. I wasn't really into running, I was more into gym and fitness. So what happens was I studied personal training. So in my year of studying personal training, we did all sorts of like fitness tests and all sorts of training styles and stuff. And we did quite a lot of of like weird drills and stuff like carrying each other on our backs and doing sprints and all sorts and they, that absolutely just wrecked my shins, um, my legs I should say. I got really really bad shin splints and I could not literally run 500 meters on the road um, without getting excruciating shin splints to the point where I was taking like ibuprofen or mypridol or whatever every day after college. So basically at college I used to do that, I got shin splints and what got me out of the shin splints is actually swapping to a trail shoe. I think it was the Salomon um, XA 3D Pro or something like that, like a big chunky sort of trail shoe and I used to literally do um, when I first started running all my road runs, all my off-road runs, 5Ks to 10Ks, a couple of days a week. That's obviously what I was limited to because I just started running, but I did that in trail shoes. And I think that because of the extra stability and the cushioning in the trail shoe and the fact that I obviously training-wise ramped it up slowly and stuff, I, I haven't had shin splints since, unless I do like really high intensity sprints or stuff like that. I can feel them a bit, but I managed to get rid of them. So I accredited at least 50% of that to using trail shoes with running and stuff. And whether that's correct or incorrect, it worked for me. And that is the reason why I've stuck with the brand shoe wise. And that gets to the reason why I've got these shoes and I run in these shoes and I race in these shoes. I did the review on these shoes and all that stuff. But I can't help but think in the back of my head, because I haven't tried other brands now, I'm not talking about road shoes because I'm with Asics with road shoes, and I've I've had I've got the Asics Gel. I think they're the 21s or the, yeah 21s I think, um, and they really really are cool. Like I'm really enjoying them, and I see no reason in switching. They're super comfortable and stuff. But obviously with these shoes, I do much longer distances. And when I did the 65K Ultra Trail Cape Town or when I did like 40, 50K training runs and stuff, 
it, it is quite a rigid, quite a hard sort of feeling shoe um, around my foot. Now, I don't know if that's just I need extra training or extra mileage or whatever, but, but in the back of my head, what I'm trying to say is that I think I might be missing out on maybe a more cushioned shoe, a more comfortable shoe, a better shoe for, for various reasons. So I would like to kind of diversify my um, what my my knowledge base if you will um, and try different brands of shoes just to kind of see and verify whether these are the shoes that I personally um, should be running in um, I must say the grip in these shoes is absolutely amazing I spent a lot of time going up and down platter clip up and down table mountain in full winter raining and stuff and the grip is absolutely solid now, if you guys are, are in any other sort of shoes i know the um ultras the like lone peak and the superior and stuff like that i'm dying to get a pair of zero drop shoes just to as we'll try it out of obviously reg mcdougall's book um and I, i'm dying to try it out but i know just because of my shin splints and the fact that i may be a slightly heavier bigger built runner um I don't want to just go straight into a zero drop shoe, especially because I use the ASIC gel. Uh, that's the Nimbus, I think it is. And these um, Salomons, obviously, I don't know what the Salomons are off the top of my head, maybe an eight mil, 10 mil drop. The same with my 10, 11, 12 mil drop with my road shoe. So I feel it would be irresponsible of me, especially before races and stuff, to just suddenly try and drop down to a zero drop shoe. But what I plan on doing, and I'll do a review on this channel definitely, is that I will get the Ultra Lone Peak 4, I think it is, and I will kind of put them in maybe once a week for my shorter sessions and slowly build up over the course of, say, a year um, to hopefully trying to run in those. Um, I think just I've tried them on before, that really wide toe box in the front, just feel is really really good and there's nothing too restrictive of it um, and a, a lot of people have got really good reviews on them obviously wear and tear wise I think they 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 have a, a little bit of a lower life expectancy than say these um, with the uppers and stuff like that I've heard but I'm just saying kind of what I've heard and what I've read don't go by what I'm saying I haven't actually tried them before so your mileage may vary but yeah, I thought I'd just jump on and go through. I still actually use these ones. These are the older ones. I still use those every day just to walk around and stuff. They're 100% absolutely perfect. Um, they're worn out a bit, I mean, on the bottom and stuff, and you can kind of see how much stride is, but they work really well. The uppers are still, still intact, and these ones I think are like maybe six months old or something and i have been doing quite a lot of stuff on the road as well so i do choose my road shoes over those for on road obviously so they i mean they're solid solid pair of shoes and i might actually end up just running in these but as i say i made this video just to let you guys know that there will be other shoe reviews coming up because the reviews on this channel obviously do really well and i'm curious to see what is out there Jumping on quickly to why I've taken such a long break, it just stems back to the whole COVID thing and it's a, like a, a first world problem, races being cancelled and all that. Thankfully what has jogged this video is, I think it was last week, Wednesday or Thursday, the entries for the Elder Trail Cape Town came out um, in every division of them and you could put in a little code um, as a promo code and you got, you had to obviously pay your 250 admin fee, which if you've seen other videos, I address that and that's moving my entry from 2020 when it was cancelled to 2021 which is this year and it's at the end of November so stoked about that race I do wish I was doing the Drakensberg race um, I hate to say even instead because I spend a lot of my time running on Table Mountain I spend a lot of my time around here and even though it's going to be a really cool race I'm, I'm dying to like travel and like pack my gear and my bag and stuff like that and fly somewhere and stay in a hotel and do a race in the Drakensberg that I've, where I've never been before and it'll be like, yeah, it's just a, a totally different experience. Um, so yeah, I just basically just was demotivated to make videos for the channel when I've obviously carried on training, but I didn't know when races were gonna happen or what was gonna happen when my dog's running after birds in the garden there. I did a 42 kilometer road and I'll put up some images and stuff of that. I also tried to film there. I was like, what's up guys, been a while. Um, and it, it was just an absolute flop. I think I've actually, to be honest, gone out about five times on different runs 
and filmed about 20 minutes, half an hour, and just I, I just haven't had a video out of it. Um, I don't know what it was, but it was basically just a bit of demotivation. I chalk it down to just from things being cancelled and, and not going as planned. But my training is going really well. I'll make a little, maybe tomorrow or the next day, I'll, I'll log on here and I'll make a little training, um, like what I've been doing with training and how I'm finding my yoga sessions every week and what I'm doing with my running and how I'm ramping up and all that stuff. But the 42 went really, really well, felt solid, recovered really well from it. And yeah, so it's all going really, really well. I'm enjoying it a lot still and the channel's not going anywhere. Hope you guys are all staying safe. Hope you enjoy the video and I hope you are still running. And obviously there are a lot of, like some guy on the channel the other day uh, said he was doing the Ultra Trail Drakensberg. So a lot of races seem to be going ahead, which is really rad. And I'm looking forward to covering a lot of them. As for this channel, I do really hope that I can eventually travel like with this channel and with a camera and film stuff and put stuff together for you guys of some trips outside of, of Cape Town. I think even up country, even to the Drakensberg, I think it'll be really, really rad. Taking the camera, filming like the plane flight and getting there and packing my kit and and warming up and, and the course and everything like that. I think it will be really cool. That's really what I'd love to do. Um, obviously I do do the, the gear reviews and the stuff with the shoes and stuff like that, but quickly addressing that as well. I, I generally take small, like everyone does I suppose, small little tips or, or little life hacks or, or whatever you may call it from different people or different documentaries or movies or books or whatever and obviously use them in my own everyday life and one of the things were at the beginning of lockdown last year I was watching a lot of like minimalist moving uh, minimalist movies and documentaries and stuff like that and I thought it was a really good idea firstly to like give back to the community in a time when corona was obviously like the lockdowns were happening no one here in South Africa was working and there was a big influx of homeless people in the area and stuff so I thought at least I could give stuff that I wasn't using give back to the community and then also declutter my own life and kind of sort that stuff out which was really helpful in the time because we had full lockdown it was like when people were running around their dining room tables inside and stuff and doing all that sort of stuff so I cleaned out my closets I went through all my stuff and I, I was trying to get into more of a mindset of not buying rubbish that I don't need and little trinkets you know when you go away like wherever overseas or, or away for the weekend or something and you get those little like trinket shops or you stop at the, the little farm stall type vibes and you get little gifts for families and stuff which is cool but I, I just I get sucked into like the mug with the name of the place on it and like the key ring with like the picture of the animal on it or something from like the game reserve or whatever and it's like all just junk it's stuff that I actually don't need that I'm wasting money on that's taking up valuable space that I, I don't actually need so it's quite cool quite like changing my mindset and when I'm in the shops now and I look at something if it's like a little trinket or whatever it is and I evaluate it on a slightly deeper level not like oh rad this is cool I'm gonna buy this I kind of look at it and I'm like do I actually really need this am I gonna use this and if it's somewhere that's close like a shopping center or something that's close to my house I can actually if needed go and buy it at a later stage which normally after a couple of weeks I realize it was actually probably not needed so that's kind of the long story about why I don't want to just make a channel on gear reviews and just buy a whole lot of gear and stuff like that I quite like coming from having done the 70.3 Ironman and stuff like that I, I triathlon I'm sure as you guys most of you maybe know there's a lot of gear it's like a big big bag and a wetsuit and your swimming stuff and different shoes for your ride and your run and all that sort of stuff um, so I quite like the fact that as well with running you put your shoes you can have a like t-shirt and shorts and you can go travel and you can run wherever all around the world and it's like the most minimal sort of gear in, uh, in any sort of sport that you can do which is really really cool so while the the videos on my channel of all the gear and stuff do really well I don't want to like sell my soul and just kind of get a whole bunch of rubbish and try and market it to you guys and stuff for absolutely no reason the reason I started this channel is to kind of like document and learn more about film and stuff like that it was originally like photography based and stuff it moved to fitness and sports based and then it moved again to trail running because that's just kind of what I was doing and 
it'll be cool if you guys follow along because I'm not necessarily always going to stick to only trail running. I want to do triathlon again. I want to try a duathlon. I want to get back in the gym pool and swimming when I can. I haven't actually been to gym during COVID at all. Um, I've got a little gym downstairs here, so I've been gymming myself. But I want to, I mean, even maybe try CrossFit one day. I've, I, I enjoy, I do everything I do here for fun. I don't compete with anyone. I, I do all the races for fun. I want to see if I'm capable of doing 100K and perhaps a hundred miler one day would be really cool um, I can also travel and do that stuff but I do it for myself I do it for the love of fitness and sports and pushing myself and that means that I'm fortunate enough as well to try different disciplines of things I've done road races I've done mountain bike races I've done all sorts of stuff so um, there's a lot of content I can make and show you guys and I think that will be more valuable to myself as well as you guys and it won't just be like a bunch of things if you know what I mean so yeah that's that bit of a ramble this video but yeah I mean if any of you guys are interested in these shoes they've held up really well they're really comfortable if you've got a wider foot just check them out because they are I mean even I put mine on like these ones and it takes me a good five minutes for them to like kind of settle a bit and, and widen a little bit because they do squeeze your foot and my foot's slightly wider than average um, I know some of them worse than others so so try them on definitely but I mean if you guys have got any any other shoe things like if you're trying any shoes or let me know down below in the comments what shoes you're running in or which ones you've tried I know the speed goats um, are obviously really really popular speed goat 4 I don't know for our terrain I'm not sure like the stack height and the the, the the height of them and stuff like that a lot of rocks twisting ankles stuff like that but I'm willing to get a pair of those or I'm willing to get a pair of maybe what else new balance has got some some newish sort of trail shoes i could try those out so yeah i'm definitely going to get a, another pair of shoes and try them out and keep these ones in the rotation as i said before don't panic i'll probably race in these they've been working really well and if it's not broke then you don't have to try and fix it but um as i said i'm, I'm just curious to see what's out there so yeah hope you're well enjoy the races good luck if you've got any coming up soon and i will catch you guys next week cheers